There are numerous superlatives that could be leveled at this, the new HTC U11. It's super speedy. It takes superb photos. It's virtually stock Android. The display is fabulous and it's a great mirror. The back of the U11 itself is effectively mirrored, reflecting colors and details from whatever's in front of it, which at least makes the unadorned phone stand out in a crowd, even if it's just the lady opposite you on the tube checking her hair looks okay. And I have to start with the looks because it's the aspect of the U11 design that screams, look at me. Whether you want a phone that draws attention to itself is another matter entirely, especially if you're out in public a lot. For example, you might admire a wonderful 24 karat gold ornament or watch, but you don't want to wear it out in the real world, apart from special occasions. The finish is also oleophobic and slippery, though the rounded corners of the U11 in fairness do at least ensure that it's a good fit in the hand, so you may be able to get away with using this naked. Which is just as well since there is precisely zero point in HTC putting in the effort to finish the U11 like this in super glossy mirrored glass. They knew the buyer covering it immediately in a thick protective TPU case. HTC does include a clear plastic bumper in the box, which is a nice touch and gives a compromise between casing the U11 and letting its glass shine through. Also in the box and notable is a pair of headphones, something which flagship phones don't normally have in 2017. The idea is that uh, usually you'd use your own quality headphones of choice with any phone. Except that you can't here since HTC does audio totally differently to just about everything in the phone world. There's no 3.5mm headphone jack. You can't even get traditional analog audio out through the USB Type-C connector. Instead, audio is output in digital form, i.e. as data, and then a DAC chipset in the supplied HTC U-Sonic headphones converts this digital information to analog waveforms for the speaker drivers in each earbud. Which all works well enough in the theory that the issue is obvious. You're limited to just this one headset or a rare third-party compatible. The U-Sonic earbud drivers are okay and the active noise cancellation works well, but they're not exactly top-end hi-fi, whatever HTC's marketing might suggest in terms of mapping your ear ultrasonically. So for best results, you really have to plug in the decent headphones of your choice using its 3.5mm jack. It's a standard, don't you know, HTC, into the supplied here by HTC USB Type-C dongle, which also contains a DAC, a digital to analog converter, but it's not that high quality. And anyway, you've then got the extra bulk and what you do if you also need to charge the U11 at the same time. Pundits have been going over just this sort of issue since the Apple iPhone 7 range appeared. And while some iPhone users have now adapted to a lightning and Bluetooth world, there has been no such acceptance in the Android world where things from different manufacturers are supposed to bolt together an awful lot more. Staying with audio, let's carry on with the speakers. I use the plural, but it's just as on the HTC 10, a single loudspeaker down the bottom into which is piped the right hand stereo channel and a traditional a uh, small earpiece up top into which is piped the left-hand stereo channel. The result is a very poor stereo effect. We've demonstrated with Jean-Michel Jarre Oxygen Part 2. This is maximum volume, by the way. <laughs> it's loud enough, but there's an imbalanced mix and it sounds funny and there's lots of frustration all round. Listening to audiobooks or podcasts or taking a speakerphone call, these are perfectly fine, but let's have none of this uh, stereo boom sound marketing talk. <laughs> HTC, I'll be quiet. HTC, if you want true stereo with proper speakers, then look instead of the ZT Axon 7 or Google Nexus 6P or any one of a number of Sony Xperia flagships, not to mention the iPhone 7 range again. Now to the positioning of the capacitive controls on home button and sensor. There's a 17 millimeter bezel on the bottom of the HTC U11, 17 millimeters. Now, this isn't an issue in itself. Plenty of phones have large bezels, though the S8 and G6 have started to trend towards slimmer edges. And the U11 is no worse than, say, the iPhone here. And the use of capacitive controls does have the usual advantage that you never lose screen real estate to virtual on-screen controls. So while the bezel is large, it's not totally pointless and certainly not unprecedented. However, the controls and the home sensor are all in the bottom half of the bezel, 
leaving a good seven millimeters of glass that does absolutely nothing and with nothing behind it in terms of display. Did HTC originally plan to put in a, an 18 by 9, 5.8 inch display and then, well, change their minds? Perhaps the components weren't ready in bulk. Perhaps the design was changed in the latter stages of production. But by then, the controls and sensors position was fixed with the resulting lack of symmetry and poor design that we see in the U11 today. And it's not only cosmetic. Many of the time you'll stab at the square of blackness to the left of the home sensor intending to go back and nothing will happen because you press too high. Instead, you have to remember to aim for the lower section to so for the recent apps control. The screen itself is excellent, as you might expect from HTC. They nailed great LCD panels a long time ago, and this one is QHD 5.5 inches and perfect in many ways. Internally, the U11 has screaming specifications. The very latest Snapdragon 835 chipset, 4 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage, organized with UFS 2.1, so future-proof and very fast. There's micro SD expansion too, so the best of all worlds in terms of memory of all kinds. Anecdotally, the U11 isn't quite as screamingly fast as the OnePlus 5 reviewed in Phone Show 311 and is powered by the same chip. So HTC Sense UI is clearly putting its oar in to some degree, but the U11 is easily fast enough for the most hardened Android user. Although not obviously visible, I was pleased to see that all the ports, microphones and buttons are sealed and that the U11 is rated at IP67 for water and dust. Now it's hard to class the U11 as durable since the mass of curved stress glass on back and front but at least you don't have to worry about dropping the phone in the bath or using it in the pouring rain. And so to the single biggest marketing point for the U11, just as with the OnePlus 5, incidentally, it's imaging here implemented with a single camera, though a very good one. A 1 over 2.5 inch sensor with 1.4 micron pixels at 12 megapixel in 4.3 with an f over 1.7 aperture lens and OIS backed up by multi-frame technology, HDR boost, essentially the same idea as Google's HDR Plus system on the Nexus and Pixel devices, all of which should produce stunning images. Happily, they're generally excellent with superb detail in all light levels and conditions. I'd put results right up with the Google Pixel range. In my test, the U11 is only bettered really by the Windows running Lumia 950 XL here, and that has its own issues in terms of end of life status and ecosystem making the U11 probably the best performing actively sold camera phone on the market right now. Now, the iPhone 7 Plus has the edge when you do a lot of zooming for obvious reasons, but overall, the U11 does a fabulous job. Focusing is super quick thanks to a Samsung-style full sensor phase detection focus system. Video capture is up to 4K and quite superb, with the OIS working a treat to keep the frame stable without any software tricks needed. Audio is captured in stereo from four microphones and with a 3D trick whereby the front ones are accentuated when you zoom in so that audio from the thing you're zooming in on is amplified. It's a simple idea and well done. The U11 also boasts what it calls edge sense with pressure sensors under the left and right edges of the phone quite low down. The idea is that you squeeze the phone in order to trigger an action or an application with advanced long squeezes if you really want to get fancy. And predictably, it's something of a gimmick in day to day life, which is not to say it's not worth having as a reviewer. It came in very handy to trigger a screenshot. Let's try that again with Edgent Set the Torch. It's a gimmick, but it's a, a useful gimmick. <laughs> Think of it as an added extra rather than the feature which will take the world by storm. Sense UI isn't much change from previous HTC flagships, though it's at least based on Android 7.1.1 here with the June security updates from Google, so it's bang up to date in that regard. It's a light skin and there's not much bloat compared to the likes of Samsung's latest offerings. So here you get the traditional blink feed panes combining news and social content. This worked very well. There was always something interesting when I swiped left to take a look. Plus Sense Companion, an assistant that helpfully suggest tips every so often. Perhaps a restaurant you might like to try nearby or a reminder to charge your phone. Not exactly rocket science. I'd rather HTC just included the official Google Assistant instead. As it is, you get the Google Screen Search plus a Google Search widget with voice on the main home screen. In terms of bundled software, it's limited to the News Republic, News Aggregator, the usual Facebook properties, the Under Armour wearables and fitness companion app, plus the Viveport VR companion, effectively a mini app store for VR apps and material. 
However, it's worth noting that the U11 doesn't meet Google's Daydream VR standard because the LCD screen technology can't cope with the refresh speeds needed. So you get VR, but not the core Google VR, as it were. In short, there's nothing too horrendous here, nothing that needs disabling out of the box. Unlocking the HTC is fast with the front-mounted sensor, and it does seem as though the tide is turning away from back-mounted sensors that you can't access when the phone is flat on a desk. Certainly being able to touch the sensor with a finger at any point to see the full time, date, weather notifications is a nice facility. There's no always on view here of any kind, which is another disappointment after first Nokia and then LG showed that the always on glance screens can be done with LCD technology by having the backlight in a low power mode. Battery life is acceptable with a 3000 mAh seal battery a little on the small side for such a large phone. It has to be said that HTC does get some credit for including Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 circuitry and a suitable charger in the box. So it's easy to get topped up in record time. Think 40% in half an hour. Time for a verdict though. For me, the ultra bling mirror finish of the U11 is tasteless. The sort of chromed mirroring used on cheap plastic gadgets to make them look more expensive. Yes, you know and I know that HTC has, quote, layered, highly refractive, precious minerals, but the effect certainly won't please everyone. The styling woes are compounded by the overlarge by 2017 standards bezels and the oddly asymmetrical sensor and control positioning, plus the controversial and totally unnecessary removal of a 3.5mm headphone jack. It all adds up to a flagship smartphone that pushes all of my buttons in the wrong direction. However, Inside the Bling is a hugely powerful phone, right up there for general UI speed and imaging prowess with the very best of the Android world right now. You do pay extra for the HTC name, the unfortunately needed bundled USB Type-C DAC gadgets, the waterproofing, the Quick Charge 3 charger, even the clear protective case, all explaining the current high price. Though I do note in many markets, HTC offers discounts throughout the year, so do watch out for these. If shiny shiny is your bag, it's not mine though, <laughs> however good the camera is.